And he just said, look, man, you, if you're on drugs, if you're messed up, if you're, you have a, a bad marriage, you're alcoholic, you come, come to church while you're messed up. Yeah. Bring all your garbage here and, and God will come in and clean you out. I was the type of guy that, you know, um, would flip through the channels and be like, land on TBN or a Christian channel and be like, you know, and who knows what I said back then. Right. But just, you know, mocked it or whatever. And then, you know, fast forward years and years later, um, I got to this point where I was on that two year binge, right? And I wanted to get clean. I had talked to a couple uh, um, outpatient rehab places, one in Bakersfield and one in Hollywood. And they both were telling me, we don't, we don't have as much success with meth addicts as we do with other drug addicts. And I'm just like going, wow. So what are you telling me? What can you do for me? And they're like, well, we can try, you know, I'm just, we just have to be honest with you and you can do it. You can, you know, if you, if you set your, but I wasn't given like a lot of hope, you know? And uh, so I was just thinking like, I gotta, cause by that time I was like, I, I do not want to exist anymore. Mm. I'm a, I'm a shell walking around with nothing of substance inside. And I got all kinds of money in the bank but I just don't want to wake up when I go to sleep. I just wish that I could just stay asleep. And wow. you know, and the only thing that made me want to breathe and, and live was my daughter. So I'm thinking, I just need to get off the drugs and so I could just be the best person I could be for her. Mm -hmm. But then I would have the thoughts when I get back on the drugs or, or do another line and that would wear off, I would think, man, she'd better off without me. Mm. And I'd start going through the suicidal uh, the thoughts and everything. And so. So it was a tug of war, but um, I told you that I was a functioning drug addict. I had these partners that were um, doing real estate deals. They were buying land and developing, and I became a partner with them. And uh, money was like my thing. I never liked to spend it. I always liked to make it grow. That was my thing before. And so these guys were growing their money, and right. so I blended right with them. And so I was attracted to them and their business through that, and they actually were Christians. Wow. So God was using my money <laughs> idol, if you will. Right. And so I- uh, Pulling you in. Yeah, and so I did a business deal with them. We bought some land, and, and they were, I was just, they, you could tell, man, I was on meth, you know? And anybody could tell something was a little off, you know? Right. And so they ended up just talking to me, and they invited me to go to church one day, and I'm like, you know, I, I used to mock it when I was growing up, and, uh, but I did ask Christ in my heart when I was 12 through some neighbors. But uh, so I held on to that, and when they asked me to come to church, I'm like, oh. you know, all I was thinking was like Ned Flanders from The Simpsons, you know? And it's like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, they're not, they're not kind of like I am, but they're not the same type of person I am, but maybe they're probably sober. So if I go there, it'll be like a community of sober people. I okay. thought Christians just didn't party. You know, that's okay. what I thought. And then I get there and I hear about this, this Jesus Christ who's real, the son of God who was here and, you know, died on the cross and, and raised from the dead and came and uh, would come to live inside of me. So... But I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around. I'm like, so this guy came and walked on the earth in a robe and did miracles and then went on, died on the cross and then raised back to life and now he's gonna come live inside of me. I'm like, how does that happen? <laughs> you know, and, uh, but you know, you could feel the presence and everything at that church, what they took me to. And I'm like, man, these people are either crazy or they have the meaning of life. And I started thinking back when I asked Christ in my heart and I'm like, maybe that was, where my journey went the wrong way, yeah. you know? Maybe that's why, sure, I got money and success and fame and every, everything, but I don't know who I am. Maybe that's where I, I went off track. Mm. And so I was just like, I raised my hand and I went home and I started praying to God like I had been a Christian for 20 years. I was wow. desperate. Wow, wow. Yeah. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. When you have this experience and when you have this re-encounter, if you will, with the Lord, uh, is it a gradual turnaround or is it an overnight uh, turnaround as far as your addiction and your lifestyle at that point? It was pretty overnight when I think about, 
you know, it was just a, a couple of weeks, three weeks or something. But I did, I, man, the pastor was so cool there. He was, he just talked about, like, he was in jeans and a, a regular shirt. He didn't look like holier than thou. And he just said, look, man, you, if you're on drugs, if you're messed up, if you're, you have a, a bad marriage, you're alcoholic, you come, come to church while you're messed up. Yeah. Bring all your garbage here yeah. and, and God will come in and clean you out. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.